Frontline Updates, where we delve deep into military strategies and updates from conflict zones. Today, we're discussing the progress of the ongoing special military operation as of August 23, 2024. I'm your host, Sharifa Muhammad MGT. I'm Colonel A.C. Ogentoy, an infantry officer. Significant losses for Ukrainian forces. The report highlights extensive losses for the Ukrainian armed forces across multiple regions, detailing the destruction of tanks, armored vehicles, artillery units, and personnel losses, suggesting a concerted effort to weaken Ukraine's military strength. Welcome to Frontline Updates podcast. Today, we're joined by Colonel A.C. Ogentoy to discuss the latest developments in the ongoing special military operation as of August 23, 2024. Colonel, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Colonel, could you start by summarizing the major actions taken by the Russian armed forces in the past week? Yes, certainly. From August 17 to 23, the Russian armed forces conducted 16 group strikes using high-precision weapons and attack drones. These strikes targeted Ukrainian airfield infrastructure, ammunition depots, and repair facilities, effectively hitting all designated targets. That's quite extensive. Can you elaborate on the specific areas that were impacted by these strikes? Yes, we targeted areas crucial for military logistics, including fuel depots and temporary deployment points for Ukrainian nationalist formations and foreign mercenaries. Additionally, hangars storing NASM's anti-aircraft missile systems were hit, which significantly affects their air defense capabilities. Moving to ground operations, could you discuss the activities of the North Group of Forces during this period? The North Group continued their operations in the Kursk region, focusing on Ukrainian formations. They employed a combination of aviation, UAVs, and artillery to destroy enemy concentrations. This has thwarted attempts by enemy reserves to reinforce their positions, resulting in significant Ukrainian losses, including personnel and armored vehicles. How about the activities in other strategic directions, like the Volchansk and Liptsov areas? In those areas, our forces damaged key units of the Ukrainian military, including mechanized and assault brigades. Notably, we destroyed advanced Western equipment like Iris-T and NASM systems. The cumulative effect over the week was substantial, with a heavy toll on Ukrainian forces. With these ongoing operations, what can you tell us about the territorial gains made by the Russian forces? Our southern and center groups have made notable advancements. In particular, the center group liberated several settlements in the Donetsk People's Republic and repelled numerous Ukrainian counterattacks, demonstrating effective control and pressure in critical areas. Colonel, could you share insights on the losses sustained by the Ukrainian armed forces as a result of these operations? Across all directions, the Ukrainian forces have sustained severe losses. For example, just in the operations by our West Group of Forces, Ukraine lost up to 3,400 troops and significant numbers of armored vehicles and artillery. Overall, we're seeing a consistent degradation of their operational capabilities. Finally, Colonel, what is the strategic outlook for the coming weeks? How do you see the operation evolving? The operation is ongoing with a clear directive to neutralize threats and stabilize regions under conflict. We will continue our strategic strikes and ground operations to ensure the security of the Russian Federation and address any advancements or counteractions from the Ukrainian side. As we conclude, is this the offensive that was expected or not? And what conclusion can be drawn? The Ukrainian armed forces are not introducing any reinforcement groups in the area of the destroyed bridges in the Glushkovsky district. This raises questions, since the direction of the further attack was seemingly designated, but no further implementation of the plan followed. At the same time, reinforcements in other areas are being recorded, although not in the volumes that have been discussed in the last few days. Most likely, the initial plan for the strike on the Kursk region assumed an offensive with large forces 10 to 12 brigades, which is about three times less than the units used for the counteroffensive in 2023. But after the first three days and a fleeting success, operational and tactical mistakes were made, which the Russian army managed to take advantage of. As a result, the Ukrainian armed forces approached the decision point on continuing slash stopping the strike not in the state and at the stage they had expected. Ultimately, this strike can be considered inoffensive. Colonel, 
Thank you for providing such a detailed briefing on the current military situation. Your insights are invaluable to our understanding of the conflict's dynamics. And thank you to our listeners for tuning in. Join us next time as we continue to provide up-to-date coverage on global military affairs. Stay with us for more updates and expert analyses on global defense and security issues. Stay informed. Stay secure. It's my pleasure. And thank you for hosting this discussion. An hours-long Israeli raid on the Tolkarim refugee camp in the occupied West Bank left widespread destruction as bulldozers destroyed streets and demolished at least one building. The Israeli military says it killed three terrorists in an airstrike and arrested 40 others.